Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. I recently did a video comparing different equalizers. Some of those were dynamic EQs. A few people in the comments wanted to know why I didn't show how to set up re-EQ as a dynamic EQ through parameter modulation. I didn't demonstrate that because it's a kind of a lengthy process. It needs its own video. And at the end of the day, I don't think it's a good technique. I don't think it's worthwhile to set that up when there are other great free dynamic EQs out there, such as TDR Nova, which was also in that EQ video. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up re-EQ as a basic dynamic EQ, and then a slightly more advanced dynamic EQ. But as I said, at the end of the day, TDR Nova, it's so easy to use, it's so fast, and it's gonna make a lot of that stuff seem really pointless. But we're gonna do it anyways, because that's what you guys wanna see. So let's just jump into it with listening to this sound. So here's a little EDM beat. All right, so that's the track we're working with. And just from looking at the waveform, you can see that these big bass notes are way above in peak level uh, over like the, the snare here, or even the sound of the regular kick drum. These sub drops are very, very loud. And if we want this to be overall loud, we need to balance that EQ, and then it's not going to be distorted when we go through a limiter. So a dynamic EQ is one way that we can fix that. We don't want to kill that... Uh, low note completely all the time or anything like that. Just when these bass notes are in there, and we can also, by using a dynamic EQ, boost up some of the uh, the weaker bass notes. It's going to be difficult to do this with re-EQ, uh, but that's where we're gonna get started with this. All right, so I want those kicks to have a bit more punch. Here's before, after. And we want that to be dynamic so that uh, it's boosting up and then it's gonna come down uh, when there actually is a bass note there. And we need another band to actually cut the low end. Right, so that's more balanced, right? If I do this. It's a little more balanced, but it's not dynamic. So uh, let's just reset the gains on this, bands one and two. Let's just try it with normal parameter modulation. So band one, we want it to cut when there's these big bass notes. So take the gain and using a shortcut to open up parameter modulation, uh, which is really the same as going to this menu button, going to parameter modulation after you touch a knob. So going to double click that to put that to middle audio control signal. I've shown this before for changing the uh, frequency to balance sub drops. So there's a link in the description and the blog post to get to that video. I'm not gonna cover that because there's already a lot to cover here. If we set this to track audio channels one and two, that's the same signal. That's the full frequency content of what's playing here. So the trigger signal is the same as what we're hearing. We want this to be a negative direction and we don't want the strength fully there, but let's just see this. And we want this to be fairly fast, so let's do a five millisecond. And I don't know, 50. 
50. There. So let's play this. All right, so we could see that band is moving down, but it's being triggered by everything. We can adjust this with the audio control signal shaping, um, but I think this is still going to be kind of limited. There's no ratio knob, so we can't really control the amount other than through the strength slider. Maybe that's better, maybe it's not. It's a little more tricky, especially when there's this minimum and maximum volume thing rather than a threshold. It is nice that we can have negative, centered, and positive directions for this. When this bass note happens, it's actually going to boost the signal. Which is an interesting effect, but it's going to distort. So, so negative and yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that for now. All right, so let's make this a little more intelligent by using a different signal just to work on this compression signal or the dynamic portion of this band. So I'm going to add in a second instance of re-EQ and I'm just going to remove all the bands because we want this just to be affecting the low frequencies put this on a low pass filter. Yeah, pretty much there. I will bypass this other EQ. So we just hear the side chain signal. So that's the signal that's going to trigger when that gain knob actually moves. We don't want this to affect the audible portion of this effects chain. So we need to set this to only output on channels three and four. Click on the two in, two out button at the top. Go to the plus button to add two more channels to this track. And we're going to put it on channels three and four and not on one and two on the output side. So in one and two, out three and four. And now if we go into the second re -EQ, go back to the gain knob, open up the parameter modulation, we can now set the track audio channels to input three and four. So now this dynamic EQ is only working on a band limited portion of the audio rather than the entire signal. So it should work a little bit better now. And that does have a lot more control uh, over the sound. It's it's doing what I want now. Unfortunately, if we want to change that frequency, we probably need to change our side chain. So now it's two plugins to do this. And if we wanted a different band, let's say band three we want to be dynamic, or band two down here to boost up those, uh, those weaker hits, we need to make an additional instance of re-EQ uh, with a bandpass filter. Bandpass being a signal that looks like this where we're only getting a narrow range of frequencies, or else just a low pass or just high pass signal if we only want to affect the high pass. Uh, we need to do that for every dynamic band that we want to use. That's going to really disrupt your workflow. Let's say we've got set up at 850 hertz. We're going to have to get our bandpass filter and put that at the same frequency and then narrow it, and we have to bypass this if we want to audition what that sounds and change the output channels back there. So let's just take that frequency and I'll put this back in the other thing and then go back to this one and what frequency was that? 547. So, you know, this is, it's just tedious. And the other thing I wanted to say, the one last problem is, once you put on parameter modulation on this, you lose manual control over anything on this. I can't change the gain for this band manually. I have to go into parameter modulation and change it here in the uh, baseline value. It's so much easier just to use a better tool. So TDR Nova 
It's free. There's a link in the description. And we'll just set this up real quick. Band one, make it narrow. Turn on threshold. We can listen to that signal. Right, we can listen to it. We can listen to just what's being removed. We can match the gain automatically if we wanted to. And we can set up this other band so that it's always boosting, say right there, and narrow, maybe not quite so much boost. And turn on dynamic. And none of these controls are locked. I can still drag this frequency around. I can solo the band anytime so I can hear that sidechain signal with the split button on. The signal that's triggering this movement is always the same as uh, this frequency curve. So it's the same filter duplicated to the sidechain signal that's going to trigger this. So only things that are happening happening in this range of like 50 to 200 are going to make this single band move. If I turn split off, it's going to be the entire frequency range from zero to 20K that's going to affect this. Okay, I think I've proven my point. Yes, you can do it. Please don't, it's a waste of time. And thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.